Hello, and welcome back to UQ. Today I would like to talk about the book The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. This book was only published in September 2020, but has already sold over 1 million copies worldwide. Morgan Housel is a partner at the Collaborative Fund, an expert on behavioural finance, history, and a former finance columnist at The Motley Fool and The Wall Street Journal. In the book, he teaches you how to have a better relationship with money. He states, Financial success is not a hard science. It's a soft skill where how you behave is more important than what you know. You can gain a lot of knowledge from reading about what has happened in the past and how the stock market has performed. But even if you know the theory, when you actually experience events such as a market crash, you may not be able to make sensible decisions. To illustrate this, the book first introduces two men, Richard Fuscone and Ronald Reed. Richard Fuscone is a Harvard-educated Merrill Lynch executive with an MBA. He had a successful career in finance, but ended up falling bankrupt after the financial crisis in 2008. On the other hand, Ronald Reed was the first person in his family to graduate high school. He worked at a gas station for 25 years and swept floors for JC Penney for 17 years. When he died in 2014, at the age of 92, he had a net worth of over $8 million. He did not win a lotto or inherit a fortune. Instead, he invested money that he saved in blue chip stocks. Obviously, there was a huge gap in financial knowledge and experience between them. But the expert in finance went bankrupt and the cleaner built huge wealth. How did that happen? What made the difference? It was their attitude and mindset. Fuscone was greedy and Reed was humble and patient. This example teaches you that no matter how much knowledge you have, if you cannot control your emotions, you can go bankrupt. And that even if you are not a financial expert, you can build wealth as long as you behave in a certain way. Just like everyone knows how to be healthy and how to lose weight, but so many don't act as per their knowledge. Knowing what to do with your finance doesn't mean you'll behave accordingly. It's because we are humans with emotions. This is exactly why we need to know how our emotions or our minds work. It's good news for us who are not financial experts, isn't it? If we really learn the psychology of money from this book and be patient and have a long-term perspective, we will be able to make better financial decisions and eventually we might be able to achieve the holy grail known as financial freedom. This book explains human psychology relating to money and by learning we will mitigate the risk of making bad decisions and failing. In this video I'm going to focus on the points that are particularly important. I've added the link to the book in the description so if you're interested I recommend that you read the book. The first point is the most valuable thing money can bring us. Why do most of us want to be wealthier? Why is it so important? What do you think is the greatest value of money? This is something we all need to know. The most important thing that money can give us is freedom. It's not that we want to buy a supercar or live in a big house, although that may be possible, but it's the freedom where you can choose how you spend your day and with whom. Happiness is hard to define, but according to research by Angus Campbell, the most common denominator of happiness was having the sense of controlling one's life. Money's greatest value lies in its ability to give you control over how you spend your time. This means that you won't have to do work that you don't really enjoy just to be able to pay the bills. You'll have freedom to decide what you're going to do each day, when you'll do it and with whom you'll do it. That's the greatest value that money can bring us. In the US, the median family income was $29,000 in 1955. In 2019, it was over $62,000. The median American home has become a lot bigger. We have bigger and better cars, TVs and new technologies that make our lives more convenient. Yet people are not happier. Why is that? It's because we don't have control over our time. Because of the new technologies, many more people are able to work from home. We can work anywhere, anytime. But that has deprived us of the sense of control over our own life and our own time. So what can we do? The book says it's not an easy problem to solve, but according to the interviews of a thousand elderly people, no one said we should work hard to make money. 
However, what they did say was that time with your friends and family is much more valuable. Instead of spending money on flashy cars or a big house, save it so you will have more control over your time. The second point is the power of compound interest. The power of compound interest is so much bigger than most of us think. As Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays for it. So it is very important to understand how compound interest works. To benefit from the compound interest, you'll need to be patient. I admit that doesn't sound exciting at all. However, let's look at Warren Buffett. Buffett built his wealth not just because he was a good investor, but the real key is that he was an investor for three quarters of a century. That's right, for 75 years. Warren Buffett's net worth at the time the book was published was $84.5 billion. And of that, $84.2 billion was accumulated after his 50th birthday. When you make investments, you might imagine your assets will increase in a straight line. But in reality, it increases exponentially, increasing more dramatically with passing time. That's the power of compound interest. If Warren Buffett stopped investing at the age of 60, his name probably would never have been so well known. It's so powerful and yet it's so hard to understand instinctively. So I will give you some examples. If you invest $10,000 in shares which return 4% annually, in 10 years time it will be worth about $14,800, increasing almost 1.5 times and it will be more than twice the capital in 20 years. It will be 3.24 times in 30 years, 4.8 times in 40 years and 7.1 times in 50 years and in 60 years it will increase 10.5 times and will be over $100,000. Hope you understand how powerful compound interest is. However, as you are making investments, return is not guaranteed. The market is volatile. Including dividends, the Dow Jones Industrial Average returned 11% per year from 1950 to 2019. But the price of success is also high. This leads to the next point. To benefit from the market, you have to pay the price. That's accepting volatility. Like everything else, the bigger the returns, the higher the price. Many people just try to get a return while avoiding volatility, trying to sell before the market crashes and buy before the next boom. This never works. Like you pay for the ticket to have a great day at Disneyland, you'll need to pay the entrance fee to get a good result. Having that mindset will let you stick around long enough in the stock market. The third point is that tail events drive everything. What does that mean? The tails are the ends of a distribution of outcomes. These tail events rarely occur, but in business and investments, these one in thousands or one in millions events drive the majority of returns. For example, the great art dealers would buy everything they could in portfolios, not picking up individual pieces they liked. And in 99% of the art they bought would have little value. But if 1% turns out to be something like Picasso's work, they will make a fortune. Investment is the same. Even if you are wrong most of the time, you can still make money. The investment return is driven by a small percentage of outlying events. The events that occur in a really short time frame in, and one in thousands type extremely successful companies. For example, you only need a company like Apple or Amazon to far outweigh many smaller companies that underperform or fail completely. So what can we do? Invest in a diversified portfolio for a long term. The book simulates three different scenarios. In the simulation, Sue invested $1 in the US stock market every month, rain or shine, from 1900 to 2019. Jim invested $1 in the stock market when the economy was not in a recession, sold everything when it was in a recession, and saved that money in cash and invested everything back when the recession ended. Tom, on the other hand, didn't get scared right away and took a few months before he withdrew from the market in a recession and took a while to regain confidence before getting back into the market. So he invested $1 in stocks when there was no recession, sold six months after a recession began and invested back in six months after a recession ended. The result? Sue ended up with plenty more money than Jim and Tom. 
So the best strategy is to stick to a regular long-term investment in an index fund. Why? Because we don't know when these tail events will happen and which stock will be successful. If you miss these points in time, it will massively affect the outcome. Charlie Munger says, quote, the first rule of compounding is to never interrupt it unnecessarily, unquote. Part of the reason people like Ronald Reed, the janitor we talked about, who made $8 million, and Warren Buffett become so successful is because they keep doing the same thing for decades on end, letting compounding run wild. The book explains so much more about really important things you need to know about money, so I strongly recommend you read this book and improve your financial literacy. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.